Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the channel. I'm your host. No. Don't do this. <sighs> Don't do this. Tommy. And I'm finally getting around to making my review, hands-on, overview, whatever you want to call it, of the PlayStation Portal. Hopefully everyone had a great holiday, their Thanksgiving, everyone got their Black Friday and their Cyber Monday shopping done and out of the way. I know this video taking a little bit longer than expected. I'm a family man, so I prioritize that over everything else. So I hope you enjoy this video. So let's jump in to it now, shall we? I'm at the So the first thing that I want to talk about are the pros. Uh, I wrote some notes down here, so I'm just going to go through some of these here. The first thing is, it feels great. It's a very comfortable device, so that's the biggest plus. The screen size is great. I'm glad that, you know, it's an 8-inch screen, so it's nice and big. Pause. Wow, that's <laughs> how we setting it off, huh? <laughs> it's only a 1080p screen, so with it only being, only being an 8-inch tablet, you really can't tell. It's it's beautiful. The quality is awesome. If it was a OLED screen, I mean, I think that that would warrant the price tag that they're asking for it a little bit more. But it's still not a bad screen at all. The battery life, uh, from my experience so far, it's not bad at all either. My youngest son, he was streaming Teardown for like a good hour and a half on it. And from a full charge... And when I picked it up a couple hours later, it had barely lost any kind of battery life. So that was a good thing. But I've played with it maybe an hour max myself. And the battery life, it lasts pretty long, in my opinion, in my experiences with it. So I would say another big uh, pro to this is it's very easy to connect and disconnect with your uh, remote play. It's very user friendly. So that's a big plus. And that's probably where the pros end for me. When it really comes down to it, the device is what I expected it to be, and that is a streaming device. And at this point in video games and technology, it doesn't matter what kind of internet you have. Streaming a video game is difficult because of the latency. Screw the lag. You might have some hitches here and there. That's acceptable. We all deal with lag now on these consoles, on our PC experiences. We deal with lag. If you have any sorts of latency, especially in a very time-focused or very reactionary game, it's not going to be good for you. The experience is going to be bad. So the performance of any of the games, no matter what you play, is going to be directly linked to your internet. Now, I have halfway decent internet. It's not anything fiber but it's not i get over a thousand down i get like 25 26 up and i don't have any issue as far as hitching goes so i would say if you have halfway decent internet you're not going to run into any kind of issues or with your experiences with remote play especially if you have already been playing or have played remote play with either the PlayStation or the Xbox. So my biggest issue, and this is the one thing that I wanted to test out initially, and I knew exactly what I was going to get, but I still, you know, held out hope. Maybe there was something magical that Sony built into their hardware that could alleviate some of this, but there's absolutely no chance on having an, an enjoyable experience with multiplayer games. Call of Duty, Fortnite, any first-person shooter, any kind of multiplayer game like this, Apex, you're gonna have a horrible time with it. And it's because those games rely on the least amount of latency and lag possible. Now, you're already dealing with streaming the game. Couple that with the latency... You're done. I've tested those games, and I can tell you, it's not a good experience. Compared to what you're going to get on a console or any other platform. 
streaming the game is just not good. It's playable. It's just not going to be enjoyable. You're going to get destroyed. You're going to get killed by people who aren't dealing with the latency issues because they're playing proprietary on their consoles or their PCs. So playing a multiplayer game like that is absolutely not recommended, in my opinion, in my experiences. With that said, what I have tested as well, aside from those games, I've tested games like Kenna, Sea of Stars, uh, Dragon Quest, uh, Echoes of the uh, Elusive Age. I've tested that as well. The Ascent, the Ascent was uh, kind of hit or miss because it's that's one of those games where it depends on your latency as well. Fall Guys was horrible. So games that are like RPG or doesn't rely solely on your input lag are absolutely playable. Those those type of games, I would absolutely say you're going to have a wonderful time with this device. It also is a touch screen, so that's pretty cool. I didn't think it was going to be a touch screen, but it does have the touch features. That's awesome. So aside from the performance of games, some of the other negatives are the joysticks are kind of loose uh, compared to your regular DualSense or your Xbox controllers. They're, they're, they're just loose. They're loosey-goosey. I don't know how else to really say it. The speakers are really not that great, in my opinion. Uh, the charging port and the audio jack are in a very weird place. I am glad to see that it is recessed behind the device. It's not at the bottom, so if you like you set it on something, it's not gonna it's not gonna pinch the ports. See, you got the charging port and the audio port for your headphones. So it's not pinched, it's more recessed, but it is a little bit more difficult getting to those. There was definitely some thought process put behind that. But other than that, I turned the haptic feedback off. I turned the, the lights that, are, that run down the sides of the controller. I turned that off. I turned the vibration off as well. I'm not really looking for the device for the haptic experience. I'm really not. That's just not what I got the device for. I got it for remote play. To play on the go whenever I want. Now, I believe if you turn those things off, your battery life does improve, but I haven't really tested that. That could be why my experience with the battery life so far is pretty decent, but let's get into the price point. So this thing after tax is about $212 USD. And is it worth $212 for it being solely a streaming device. There's no really other features of this device at all. I think it's more on the expensive side. I think it should be a little bit cheaper. Maybe 150 would be a lot more acceptable. I think that there wouldn't be as many people against buying it. You can't connect if you have a pair of wireless Bluetooth headsets. You can't do that, and it's unfortunate. It's pretty much like an, going down the Apple route where it's proprietary. You need their little earbuds to connect to it or you have to plug in wire, wired headset uh, to it, and which in my case, I don't care about all that. But there are people out there that, that, that do, that are concerned about that. So for it being $200, a little bit over $200, and have its very, very little features, no features really at all, I'd say it's, it's too expensive for what it, it provides, what it offers. So I would not recommend this unless you're someone who already remote plays and wants a better, maybe a better experience with your remote play of the PlayStation 5. Other than that, I would not recommend this to someone who is looking to game uh, on a portable device with your PlayStation 5. You're just not going to get the same experience. It does not matter how much they put their haptic technology into this device. It's not the same experience. Uh, and I kind of understand why they they split this thing in half and put a tablet in the middle of it because I mean there was no, there's nothing else going on for this thing. There's really nothing else going on for it. And this video is not to bash Sony. It's not to bash anyone who's a fan of this thing. Maybe you love it. Don't take it so personal. This is my experience with it. I didn't get this thing for free. This wasn't provided by Sony or anyone to review this. And 
you know, I'm going to give you my opinion and my experience with it. I could be a complete dick and be like, not nah, a shit is trash and do the whole console war thing. But that's just not who I am. Sorry, I'm not going to troll you. So, yeah, if you're not already remote playing with the PlayStation 5, I wouldn't recommend getting it. It's really not worth it unless it we see a price cut in the near future. Then, you know, 150, 120, maybe, maybe even 130. I would say, yeah, pick it up. It's definitely worth it. But at the price point now, I, I can't recommend it. But that's pretty much all I have for you. If I have a different experience with it in the future, maybe I'll do an update video to this, this one here. But that's pretty much all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, down below, let me know. Do all those things in the comment section. Like it. If you haven't subbed, absolutely, please give me a sub. If you enjoyed my content, I would absolutely appreciate it. And as always, it's been your boys, been real, and I'm out later.